What's up guys, John from Lost Rally Games here and in this video I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about the Unity Prefab system. Alright, let's go! So what is a prefab anyway? The word prefab is short for prefabricated, which is a derivative of prefabrication. These terms are commonly used in construction and manufacturing. Pre-made sections and components combine to create a larger structure. Wikipedia defines prefabrication as the practice of assembling components of a structure in a factory. In our case, the structure is our game world. The factory is Unity. Prefabs can also be thought of as Lego pieces. So how do these prefabs work in Unity? Unity's prefab system allows you to create, configure and store a game object complete with all its components, property values and child game objects as a reusable asset. The prefab asset acts as a template from which you can create new prefab instances in the scene. Let's change these boring boxes to something a bit more game-like, shall we? Nice! Now pretend this Viking is an enemy in your game. Changes can then be made and applied to the source or master prefab and automatically rolled out to all instances of that prefab game-wide. Prefab updates work in two directions, in that an instance can be modified to update the master, which can then be rolled out to the other instances. It's also possible for instances to have unique attributes from the master prefab and other instances. This is an extremely powerful feature of the Unity prefab system. Any game object in Unity can be a prefab, from players and ammo crates to lights and hidden triggers. Furthermore, game objects that are used solely for scene organization do not typically need to be prefabs. They can though. So why do we want to use them? In Blood and Mead, the game I'm currently working on, I use prefabs everywhere. The player is a prefab, the enemies are prefabs, the environmental objects are prefabs, as well as all individual terrain tiles, effects, and even UI components. Basically, anything that is used repeatedly between scenes and levels should probably be a prefab. Prefabs give you an efficient way of building and populating vibrant scenes without creating similar objects from scratch each time. The most powerful feature of the Unity prefab system is indisputably the ability to roll out changes to various prefab instances simultaneously and instantly. Here we have three instances of a tree prefab. Let's say we want to change the color of the leaves. Rather than changing every single tree individually, we can simply change the master prefab. This will update every instance of this tree, not just in this scene, but the entire game. And as mentioned earlier, we can also have variations between instances that will not be overwritten. So let me tell you a story. Early on in the development of Blood and Mead, I was working on my player controller. I had attached complex box colliders and nested children. Somehow that scene file mysteriously disappeared. I don't know what happened. Maybe I bumped the keyboard. Maybe it was the Unity Gods. One way or another, I lost that work. If that player controller had been a prefab, I could have just pulled another one from the library and picked up where I left off. That was a tough day. So how do we make them? To turn an ordinary object into a prefab, you simply drag that game object from your scene hierarchy into a project folder. The best practice here is to call the folder prefabs. Notice that the game object's icon turns to a blue cube. This signifies it is now a prefab. These objects can now be deleted and re-added to the scene at any time without risk of losing them permanently. Editing the source or master prefab is easy. You simply locate the prefab in the prefabs folder and hit open prefab or simply double click it. You can also access the master prefab through an instance within the scene. Simply find the instance and click the arrow icon on the right. Doing so will open and isolate the contents of the prefab in a dedicated window. Any edits done inside this state will affect the master, so be careful. When you are done, click the back arrow to return to the scene. 
any changes you have made will automatically be rolled out to all the other prefab instances. So what if we made changes to a prefab instance in the property inspector and we wanted to roll those changes out to the other prefabs? This is where the Unity system really shines. Once a change is made in the property inspector of a prefab instance, the text gets darker or bold. This gives us a nice visual indicator as to what instances we have made changes to. If we were to update the master prefab, these changes marked in bold would be protected from override. We can now choose to leave this instance as unique from the others, or apply the changes to the master, rolling them out game-wide. The Overrides button at the top of the property inspector handles exactly that. Clicking it will open up a small panel with two additional buttons, Revert All and Apply All. These are rather self-explanatory. Apply All will assign these changes to the master prefab, whereas Revert All will discard all changes and bring this instance back in line with the master. Alternatively, we can select items in this list and individually choose which we'd like to assign and which we'd like to discard. These two panels are useful for reference. The left panel represents the values on the master prefab, with the right panel showing the changes on this specific instance. You can even write changes directly into this panel which has the same effect as writing them into the property inspector. Another quick story. In Blood and Me, I have these spinning traps that go around and their speed has a public property exposed in the property inspector. And I had calibrated these traps throughout various different levels to match the particular game flow. I accidentally overwrote the whole series of prefabs and it messed everything up. And I had to go through and spend days, literally days, one by one, recalibrating all these spinning traps. Nested prefabs are exactly what they sound like. Prefabs inside other prefabs. A practical example of this would be a car, where the body is a prefab, and nested inside the body are wheel prefabs. This way you could have many cars with different bodies, which share the same wheel prefab giving you the power to roll out some new wheel designs across all the different car styles. So say we want to add this helmet prefab as a child to one of these Viking prefabs. We can do that by dragging the helmet prefab onto the Viking prefab in the scene. This can also be done directly by editing the master prefab as we did in the previous step. However, doing so would add the helmet automatically to all these Vikings. Congratulations, you've just made your first nested prefab. And of course, as previously, we can apply these changes to the master and give this helmet to all the other instances. Unity supports deep nesting of prefabs. You'd want to be a little sensible here and not go too far down the rabbit hole. Prefab within a prefab within a prefab within a prefab. <gasps> Inception. Unpacking a prefab simply means to turn it back into an ordinary game object, and with that, removing the blue prefab icon. And why would we want to do this? Okay, so let's say we need a new enemy type that is similar to our existing Viking prefabs, but different enough to deserve its own unique prefab. Perhaps it's like a robot Viking with a unique script file attached. Rather than setting up a whole new prefab and pasting over a bunch of identical components and properties, we can give ourselves a head start by unpacking a similar prefab, giving us a more efficient starting point to build on. To do this, we simply select a prefab instance in our scene hierarchy, right-click the name and click Unpack Prefab. Doing so breaks the link to the master source prefab, turning it back into a normal game object. Notice there are two unpack options, unpack prefab or unpack prefab completely. This relates to nested prefabs. Unpacking completely will not only turn the target prefab back into an ordinary game object, but all the nested prefabs will also be unpacked. In this case, we shall leave the link to the nested helmet and choose the standard unpacking option. Note that this action does not have any effect on the master prefab, which will remain safe. We then give this game object a unique name, 
make some new changes, and drag it back into the prefabs folder. We now have a whole new prefab unrelated to the previous version. Very cool. So how do you feel about prefabs now? Hopefully I've done a reasonable job demonstrating their power while also unpacking some of the intricate nuances. Please do like and share this video if you found it useful. I'd really appreciate that. And of course, sub to the channel if you want to see more game dev videos. I've got plenty coming up. See you guys. Keep it indie. What, you guys are still here?